I think when the more games pass, the more I am running out of things to say with this Flyers team as they are finally back in play tonight after technically their COVID break because they didn't play Tuesday against the Hurricanes. They played tonight in Boston against the Boston Bruins on national television. Oh, oh boy. And, uh, yeah, wasn't really a fan of the way they played. I can only draw a few positives from this game. Like, yeah, they got everyone back in the lineup tonight. Basically, it's been their healthiest lineup in a little bit ever since they went on their little COVID run. They got Drew back. They got Provorov back. They got Konechny, Sandheim back. So, basically, everyone that was mostly on COVID is back besides Ristolainen who just went on it but still I really was not a fan of the way they played and it can only really draw a few positives from this game but before we get into all of that what is going on everyone welcome back to TTP Sports and before we get into this Flyers loss over the Boston Bruins the most important thing you can do is hit that subscribe button I will greatly appreciate that so if you're a new viewer looking for all the latest Philadelphia sports news recaps and events this is the place to be hit that subscribe button it's a great or a miserable time depending on the outcome and and if you are a current subscriber of the channel, I am grateful for you being here that long and looking to continue that down the road. Also, now, if you're looking to go to any sporting event, concert, anything like that, use the code TTP Sports now for $20 off your first purchase with SeatGeek. So that could be hockey, NFL, the playoffs are coming up this weekend, so definitely utilize that basketball, uh, baseball, hopefully when that comes back, uh, concerts, anything you can think of, definitely utilize SeatGeek, the code TTP Sports for $20 off your first purchase. Definitely. That's like what free soda and a free food at a sporting event. Yeah, definitely take that offer up there. So getting into the business tonight, the Flyers lose three to two to the Boston Bruins in TD Garden on ESPN nationally televised game. And, uh, boy, they couldn't have started off any worse going down 2 nothing with David Pasternak, out of all people, of course, against the Flyers. Like, go figure. He gets his hat trick tonight. And, what, that's his third hat trick in the past two seasons against this Flyers team. He scored two of them last year and this one tonight. And for Boston, I think their last game, they played yesterday, too, against Montreal. And Brad Marchand had a hat trick. So, two hat tricks in two nights in a row for Boston there. And uh, for the Flyers' standpoint... That's their third hat trick allowed in the past four games. Tonight, David Pasternak against uh, San Jose on Saturday, Tomas Hurdle, and the uh, game on Tuesday in Hanna and Anaheim, Troy Terry. So, yeah, the Flyers have been playing like shit. Go figure. <sighs> this goddamn team, man. Like I said, I am running out of so many things to say. Like, yes, they did get better as the game went along. Of course they did. Like, they controlled some more of the pace, but still, I felt like Boston was the better team throughout the entire thing. Of course, Tuka Rask returned tonight, so there you go there with his record against the Flyers. But, you know, the Flyers coming out of this game, you know, you couldn't get any more uh, not ready. Like, it's the, the, the typical Flyers, you know, coming out soft, like, not even coming out to play at all. I think Boston had, like, what, the first 7-10 shots of this game. The Flyers didn't get their first shot until halfway through the first period. And basically, all of their shots in that first period were just easy enough for Tuka Rass to get into this game. They really weren't anything dangerous at all in that first period. Both goals for Boston come early. David Pasternak, Flyers lose a board battle in their own zone. You got David Pasternak in the middle in the slot. Sniping one pass, Carter Hart goes up early, one, nothing early for Boston. And then the Flyers eventually take a penalty. I believe this was a Cam Atkinson high sticking penalty, if I am. No, it's actually, this was a, a Nick Sealer penalty from behind the net. So Boston goes on to the power play, and, and man, this camera angle by ESPN. Like, it, it, it gives you the idea, yeah, you're looking from the press box view, but watching it on TV, it's just like, what am I watching? This is a terrible camera angle. But Boston goes on the power play. Beautiful pass from Marshand over to David Pasternak. And it's a goal. It's just beautiful pass by Marshand. Puts it into the empty net. Carter Hart basically had no chance on this shot. Becomes a 2-0 Boston lead. And Boston dominated the entire first period. Basically after those first two goals allowed by Carter Hart. Yeah, the first one you can definitely say he would probably want back. The second goal he had way no chance on whatsoever. So... I would say Carter Hart was basically one of the best, probably the best flyer on the ice tonight. He was probably the main reason why they were in this game to begin with. Yes, he would definitely want that first goal back, but I thought he settled in very well after those first two goals were allowed. And it sucks to say because like you just feel bad for Carter Hart because he has to play behind this terrible team that's in front of him that's allowing all these dangerous chances for Boston. But thank God, Bar 
Hart was there, and they were in this game because of Carter Hart. That's basically the entire summary of this goddamn thing. It, it just is. It's bad. And Car- yep, Carter Hart settled down. You go into the intermission, down to nothing, go into the second period. And the Flyers definitely got some more jump in their game. And this is where one of the other positives that come from it, in my honest opinion. And that's Joel Faraby. Joel Faraby was buzzing the entire second period. He gets a breakaway, wasn't able to beat Rax there. And then he gets that, you know, two-on-one chance. But the Flyers do go on the power play first because Boston, you know, later half in this game was getting, you know, into the penalty trouble. And this game was very chippy as well. A lot of roughings going on here, a lot of scrums. You know, Zach McEwen getting into a fight in the second period was basically trying to spark the team up. I guess I, I hate when they have to rely on that because that basically just describes how bad of a team you are when you really have to rely on a fight to spark you up, and that's nothing wrong against Zach McEwen. He is doing the right thing in that position in his role, but as an entire team, it should really tell you how many times like you need to get sparked because of a fight. That just shows probably how not good you are. But the Flyers eventually do go on the power play a little before halfway through this period. The first unit didn't literally look that good. The second unit comes out. You got Ivan Provorov on the left side. I got a pass from Keith Yandel. He fires one on net, deflected in by Cam Atkinson, becomes a 2-1 Boston lead there. And then the Flyers, you know, I think this is when Faraby, he eventually gets his breakaway. He gets robbed by Rask. And then eventually Faraby gets another chance 2-1-1 with Cam Atkinson later on in this period, towards the end or stages of it. And then you get... This weird play, I have no idea how the hell this play even turned out because Faraby tried to pass it over to Atkinson, the pass hit his skate, and then the pass somehow landed back onto the stick of Joel Faraby, and he manages to put it into the empty net pass Rask to tie the game up. I have no idea why, but hell, Joel Faraby definitely deserved that goal from the way he was playing in that second period. And basically, the positives in this game, in my honest opinion, Carter Hart and Joel Faraby. Because Joel Faraby has been a bright spot, one of the lone bright spots for this team the entire season. Like, I'm more looking towards the younger side of things, bright spots, but, like, besides, you know, your usual bright spots, and Claude Giroux and Cam Atkinson have been this year, Carter Hart and Joel Faraby have been one of the more main bright spots as well for this team. And I'm not really going to drive in Cam York at all because he really hasn't played that much, so I don't really think it's fair for him to say, you know, anything like that. But, really, it's just been Carter Hart and Joel Faraby. Like, seriously, that's basically the entire description of that scenario. But then directly after Joel Farabee scores, Justin Braun takes a penalty. And then on that penalty, Max Wilbin takes a penalty. So Boston goes on a 5-on-3 in the later stages of that second period. And you know what happens. You get a little bit of a scrum between Bergeron and Sandheim in front of the net. And Sandheim was definitely barking for a penalty on this play. Carter Hart loses his stick on a scrum. You know, Boston passing the puck all over the place. Carter Hart literally having to try to get any position possible. And then during that scenario, he loses his stick. Bergeron and Sandheim, they fall down. Sandheim barking at the refs. Get Pasternak from the point putting one by Carter Hart, closing off the hat trick right there, and becomes a 3-2 Boston League going into the end of the period, and it was just like, eh, yeah, that definitely was predictable. And, and definitely, if you can, if you uh, go check on Twitter too, I called this. I called, you know, David Poster not getting a hat trick. If you go to uh, Chris Mayer's uh, co-host of the Florida podcast, if you go to uh, his Twitter account, he predicted that the Flyers were going to win tonight, and I told him, I would, I'm would, i going to blame you if David Pasternak scores a hat-trick in this game, and that's exactly what happened, so Chris, you're definitely getting a chunk of the blame in this game, so Boston goes up 3-2, going towards the end stages of the second period, and that's how you go into the intermission down 3-2, so Third period goes underway, and Carter Hart is unbelievable once again. The Flyers do get a couple of power plays in this period, and oh my goodness, like the, even though it's more in the later stages, Zach McEwen also had a brilliant chance on a great pass from Kevin Hayes as well. The first line had a couple of chances, Drew Faraby, Cam Atkinson, and they were really able to get one by Tukarask, and then you also you got Carter Hart being brilliant once again, but then you go towards the, the end stages of this third period, and it's just like, my God, how do you not tie this game? Because it, I think this is over the halfway point of this period. So Boston, it was Brandon Carlo, puts the puck over the glass, becomes a delay of the game. Flyers go on a five on the four. And then halfway th- through that penalty, then you got Carlo, not Carlo, but he already went to the box, it's Charlie Coyle doing a delay of the game. So you got a 5-on-3 for 50 seconds. And 
I didn't see a worse five on three in my life. How how can you be that bad on a five on three? I know this power play is trash, but how can you be that bad on a five on three? How can you be that passive? How can you be that cute? How can you be that slow? You allowed yourself to get four checked on a five on three. How is that even the fucking possible? How? How is that possible in the world? I just don't understand. Because this is the thing with this goddamn team that frustrates me. Simple things. Simple things that frustrates me with this goddamn team. And I know I shouldn't be getting frustrated because I know this team is shit. But still, it's the simple goddamn things. On a 5-on-3, you should be able to tie the fucking game. But no. You have the worst 5-on-3 that I have possibly seen in my goddamn entire life. What was the timeout for then? It didn't really do anything for it. And then after the power play ends, you pulled the goalie for the final four minutes. Yes, you possessed the puck for the majority of the time. But every shot you took was stopped or it got blocked or it went wide. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand at all. And that's how your game ends. It does. Because the Flyers, yeah, they possessed the puck for the final couple of minutes there with the empty net. But they really weren't able to cash in. There really weren't any dangerous chances there. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's just a joke. It's it's an embar it's embarrassing. How that five on three at the end stages of the game, how you were not able to generate many chances, let alone you get four checked on that five on three, let alone that was bad, bad, bad. I just don't know how else to describe it. It's trash. It is absolute trash and embarrassing. It really is. So your three stars of the game. David Pasternak, go figure, first star. Tuka Rass, second star, go figure. And third star for the Flyers, Cam Atkinson. Shots on goal in this game, 36-27 to 27 in favor of Boston. Both teams tied in faceoff percentage, 50% each. Flyers go 1-4 for four on the power play, while Boston goes 2-4. for four. A lot of penalty minutes in this game, 17 each for both teams. Physical game, 23 hits to 18 in favor of the Flyers. Boston blocked a lot of shots in this game, 16. Boston also gave the puck away a lot, which was very surprising. Uh, shots on goal per period, 12 to 6 in the first period in favor of Boston, 17 to 9 in the second period in favor of Boston, and 12 to 7 in the third in favor of the Flyers. So yeah, it's just a bad game. I I like I don't care that you you know sparked your game up in a little bit in, in the later half of the game. Like you do, that five on three literally just made me want to vomit on how bad it was. It it was bad. Like, I feel bad for Carter Hart out there. He had to watch that slop from the goddamn bench. Really. It's just sickening. It's the way that Carter Hart keeps you in the goddamn game and you can't, you know, help him one bit. Help the guy out. And it also goes to figure that I get an idiot on Twitter saying, you know, Carter Hart needs to stop a couple of pucks here. Have you watched this entire season, you know, blame Carter Hart in this game? Yeah, the first goal he would definitely want back. But Carter Hart was the fucking reason why he was in this goddamn game today. Or tonight, actually. He was the only reason why this team was in the game. He is one of the major bright spots of this entire season. He stole so many games from this year. But no, Carter Hart's one of the reasons to blame. Ha! <laughs> letting, you, letting yourself get fooled because he stole you guys a playoff series. Go get a life guy you don't have no idea what the hell you're talking about and just you know your usual twitter idiots out there to have no idea what the hell they're talking about but still <sighs> i don't know i have no idea what to talk about about this it, it, it's just frustrating it really is but at the end of the day i know this team sucks it, they do they really suck <laughs> and it's funny too just because talking from this game and then corresponding to, you know, what the Bobby Clark talked a couple of days ago on the on that podcast, it was just funny because I think I think um and uh, there was a bunch of other things that I was saying during that draft and stuff like that. I think it was it's a I think something else that Anthony Sanfilippo could have said as well, that the Flyers were looking at David Pasternak in the twenty fourteen draft over Travis Sandheim. And it makes me laugh because David Pasternak has been dominant over the Flyers in his history, especially he when he was tonight. It's just unbelievable. It really is. <laughs> and also going back to that video as well, I think when Bobby Clark said about the Cal McCarr thing, I think there's more rumors about that that the Flyer Scouts actually wanted Miro Heiskanen 
over Nolan Patrick. And it's still like I understand you could talk about it to hearsay and all that crap, but it still just shows to go you that the discrepancy that was between the front office during that time when Hextall was here and really just how nothing was, you know, discussed between anyone like maybe maybe uh, Bobby Clark was confused and he meant, meant here, Miro Heiskanen. Maybe he did mean Makar. Maybe the scouts were, you know, between Heiskanen and Makar and they really didn't want Nolan Patrick. But at the end of the day, it is what it is at this point because you can't really go back and change history even though Cal Makar is a goddamn beast. And Miro Heiskanen is also a good player in himself for Dallas. But I'm not going to continue further on there because that would just get me more frustrated. It really will. So... After this game against the Boston Bruins, whew, it doesn't get any easier from here. It just does not. You get the New York Rangers on Saturday at home at 7 p.m. Then you get a home-and-home home against the New York Islanders. Yes, the Islanders have not been good this season, so maybe there's a little bit of an even competition there, but you never know with the goddamn Philadelphia Flyers. And then you get Columbus next week at home. Jake Voracek's first game back in Philadelphia. Get Buffalo on the 22nd on the road. A little bit of a back-to-back. Home against the Dallas Stars on the 24th. You get the Islanders on the road once again on the 25th. And then you wrap up the month of January with a home game against the Los Angeles Kings on the 29th on a Saturday at 1 p.m. So, looking at the uh, standings, because why not? Flyers record right now, they are 13, 16, and 7. And looking at just the, uh, you know, the division itself at this point, the Philadelphia Flyers in the Metropolitan Division. They are currently in sixth place in the Metropolitan Division, tied with the New Jersey Devils. Both teams have 33 points. So the Flyers are really just neck and neck, you know, with, you know, the bottom three teams in this division. Honestly, the Devils, you could say, are a better team than the Flyers at this point. <sighs> oh boy. And honestly, I just want to look at where the Flyers place in the entire league, too. I want to see how many places. So the Flyers, they rank 24th in the league right now. 24th, 33 points, and the teams that are behind them, the New Jersey Devils, who are they're tied with 33 points, the Chicago Blackhawks with 31, the York Islanders, they have 28 points, the Buffalo Sabres, they have 26 points, Seattle Kraken, they got 24, Ottawa Senators, they got 20 points, Arizona Coyotes got 19, and the Montreal Canadiens with 18 points. So the Flyers are definitely not as bad as, you know, the Ottawa's, the Arizona's, and the Montreal's, but they're not a good team. They are not. And looking at their goal differential, too, you can probably put them with the bottom six, team, six teams on this list as well because the Flyers had the worst goal differential in the Metropolitan Division. And I want to look in the Eastern Conference as well to see if they have who has worse goal differential than the Flyers. So in the Eastern Conference, the Flyers had the third worst goal differential with the Buffalo Sabres in second and the Montreal Canadiens having the worst goal differential in the league at minus 54. The Flyers have a minus 30 goal differential. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. But uh, I can only frustrate myself so much with this team, but I think after every single game, it's going to be nothing but frustration because I don't see it getting any better from here because of the matchups they're playing up against, and the Flyers are just not that good of a team in general. So it's going to be a really frustrating point until the end of the season. So I think that's going to do it for this recap, everyone. What are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on Carter Hart? Your overall frustration? I want to hear all those thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave those there. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. Don't forget to check out the Panda Lines, which I'm a part of. Their links are down in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the links to Broads Media, the Florida Pod Merch website, and also Flyers Nitty Gritty. All that good stuff is down in the description below. Don't forget to check those out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button and also use the code TTP Sports for $20 off your first purchase at SeatGeek. And I will see you next time.